Good afternoon. I'm Angela Petro, and I'm also the owner of Sweet Carrot. We're here at our first brick and mortar location in the 5th by Northwest neighborhood of Columbus. And I'm excited to share we're also in the process of expanding and opening our second location, also in the city of Columbus, on Polaris Parkway. Our uh, carrot crew of 30 coworkers serves fresh, casual comfort food in a family-oriented setting. I want to emphasize our role as a family-oriented restaurant. And our bathrooms reflect that fact. When planning our restaurant space, it was never a question that our design and amenities would reflect our values. We wanted to ensure access for mothers and fathers to restrooms and include changing stations in both. Starting a small business can be difficult. There are administrative hurdles and there are startup costs that sometimes cause business owners to only comply with the bare minimum health and building standards. Sweet Carrot made the investment to provide what we believe are socially responsible amenities to families with babies and small children. This is one small step that we can take to achieving gender equity and allowing parents and caregivers to participate equally in the child care process. I want to thank Council Member Stinziano and the City of Columbus for making equally accessible changing stations available to other small businesses and moving the needle toward a gender equitable community that is supportive to all parents and caregivers. And with that, I invite you to all join Sweet Carrot for lunch later, check out our menu, and of course, our bathrooms. And now, please welcome Council Member Michael Stinziano. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here. Before we begin, I do want to recognize my colleague, Councilwoman Elizabeth Brown. Thank you for taking the time to be here. Um, Angela, real honor to be here. Thank you to your staff for uh, working around the crowd and working around us and, and making sure the customers are having a great experience. But really appreciate you opening the doors to highlight uh, this program and this initiative. Uh, as you mentioned, we definitely recommend anyone taking advantage of the comfort food that's just over there and also checking out their bathrooms uh, as you want to in the theme of the day. Uh, I am Michael Stinziano, one of our Columbus City Council members, uh, but also father of Cooper and Riley, very busy four and two year olds. And uh, in our work on council, we are always uh, out in the community engaging with residents. And we're here because of a resident that reached out about a year ago. Uh, he contacted me after having an experience at a local market where his daughter, unfortunately, uh, not unfortunately, but needed to have uh, be changed. He went into the father's restroom and found there was not a changing station. He ended up having to change her on the floor, and that experience led him to do additional research, look at what other cities provide, and ultimately reach out to me and wanting us uh, to be committed for Columbus to do better. And so that's what we're here today and where we're going to make today's wonderful announcement. With Father's Day weekend fast approaching, uh, I am here to announce uh, legislation to fund a new grant program for Columbus small businesses and organizations to increase equal access to changing stations for all parents, guardians, and visitors to the city of Columbus. This legislation takes a step in reducing gender differentiated parenting. Columbus is home to the modern family where parents share equal and interchangeable responsibilities and I want our local families and local governance to reflect that change. In fact, Columbus is already taking steps to address gender differentiated parenting through efforts such as the Columbus Women's Commission, which Angela also serves on, and Celebrate One. This legislation is a step in supporting those efforts and our community needs. Businesses and other organizations will be encouraged to apply for changing stations and ensure equal access to their facilities. This legislation is poised to be introduced by the end of the month with a grant application to go live in July. Businesses and organizations eligible for the Changing Stations grant must be in good standing with the City of Columbus with 50 or less employees with public restrooms, locations with gender designated restrooms, and can apply for and install up to two changing stations to ensure equal access to parents of both genders. And locations with a family restroom or non-gender designated restroom may apply for and install upon reward one diaper changing station. So grants will be awarded on a first come, first serve basis to eligible applicants. This legislation is poised to fund up to $25,000 
of small business grants and changing station units from Council's Neighborhood Initiatives Fund. I want to thank a couple of partners we have with us today. First, Foundations Worldwide Inc. Foundations is partnering with the City of Columbus to supply changing stations at a reduced cost per unit. They're an Ohio based company, and you'll soon hear from Dave Stitchick in a couple minutes about Foundations' passions for serving families and our community. Thank you, Dave, and the Foundations and to Foundations Worldwide. Second, the Columbus Department of Parks and Recreation. Uh, I want to thank Director Collins and his team for working with us and supporting this effort on the public facilities front. Par recreation and Parks will be installing equal accessible changing stations and 30 recreation centers throughout the city in the years to come. Lastly, I want to bring up a very special community partner that's doing great work across the city. The Columbus Urban League is a constant in Columbus. They're currently partnering with Mayor Columbus in the Celebrate One initiative and are serving in many Columbus neighborhoods. I've seen firsthand the work they've done with moms-to-be in supporting fathers for newborns and expectant parents. They are truly strengthening families and specifically identifying what fatherhood means in the city of Columbia. So with that, it's my pleasure to introduce Stephanie Hightower. Thank you, uh, Councilman Stenziano. Um, and also, I want to say hello to Councilwoman Liz Brown. Uh, you know what? This is really exciting. I know a lot of people probably don't think this is exciting, but this really, really, really is. And I really also have to recognize two of my colleagues. And so for the reporters afterwards, they're the real ones who do the work. You don't want to talk to me. I'm just a figurehead. But I do want to introduce David Flewellen, who runs our Moms to Be program, and Mark Dodley who also runs, they're both in our Father to Father program. At the Columbus Urban League, we have an African American male initiative. And one of the components of that is our fatherhood program. And it really is about how we can help those in the community be better fathers. Um, how can we look at nurturing type? We have a nurturing type of curriculum. We help those individuals who are dealing with being separated from their children. But I think it's just an incredible story, Councilmember Stenziano, when you talk about a father who goes into a, a restroom and he then doesn't have a changing table and he has to change his daughter on the floor. And for those of us mothers, I know we all probably cringed when we heard that. But what's more exciting is the fact that he reached out to you and he really is the hero as long, along with you and that you heard him and that you're putting this kind of program in place because if we really want to have fathers be responsible, we have to help to give them the tools in order to be responsible. And that's what we do at the Columbus Urban League with our Father to Father program. Um, so, uh, you know, again, we're intimately engaged with Celebrate One, Moms to Be, our Nurturing Fathers program. We, right now, we have been able to pay more than $3.7 million in child support with bringing dads and their children back together. Because we all know that sometimes when dads are separated from their children, they don't pay that child support. Um, but again, this is an opportunity, again, to give them the tool that they need in order to be successful. So on behalf of the Columbus Urban League and the constituents that we serve and that Mark and David serve, we thank you. Um, I don't think we qualify for one of those grants because I think we need some of those changing stations in our, uh, but maybe I can talk with Dave Stidget afterwards, who I'm getting ready to have you come up. Um, you nonprofits, we need them too, all right? Um, so we might not apply for that grant, but hopefully maybe we can come get a discount from you. Uh, and, so I'm, I'm, and so with that, I'm going to introduce Dave to come up and talk about the wonderful support that he's bringing to the program. Thank you. All right, thank you, Stephanie. And in particular, thank you, Michael and Matt and Kevin, Lee, and the entire Columbus City Council for allowing us to be part of this great initiative. Um, um, it's refreshing to see that Columbus, which is close to my backyard, is taking a lead role in an initiative like this because it's growing in momentum at local levels, at city levels, and at a national level. Um, first, I'd like to tell you a little bit about who we are and why this is important to us. Foundations is an Ohio-based company that provides safe, durable, and reliable children's products. The children's products we provide are designed specifically for public establishments like restaurants, public restrooms, daycare facilities, provide cribs for hotels as well. So um, Foundations believes it's everybody's responsibility to contribute to the well-being of children. And that children must always be our highest priority. 
and the resources we needed to care for children should be available to everybody. And it's extremely important for us when we design a changing station to provide a safe, sanitary, convenient, and reliable place for parents to change their babies. So why should this be important to businesses? Every public establishment provides a service. A mall provides a place where people can shop. Um, a restaurant, like this one, provides great food and a great environment for people to eat. A movie theater provides entertainment. All of these places, their goal is to provide their customers with what they came there for and give them as an enjoyable experience as possible. Um, as a father of a three-year-old myself, these past few years, I have, I have learned firsthand that when I go to a public establishment and I have a daughter that needs changed, my experience changes when I don't have the option to change her in the bathroom. I have to go out to the car or on a floor and find a place to do it. You make it work, but it shouldn't have to be that way. So we are very excited to have this opportunity to partner with Councilman Michael Stinziano on his initiative. And with that, I'd like to welcome back to the podium Mr. Stinziano for some closing remarks. Thank you. So Dave with uh, Worldwide uh, kind of undersold. They are stepping up. Uh, they are working in collaboration and being a partner to make sure that we can provide as much product as hopefully interests uh, will demand. And so really appreciate uh, an Ohio-based company working in collaboration with the city of Columbus. Uh, we've seen just in making the announcement um, a swell of support. A lot of small businesses have said this is a great idea. We've worked very hard um, to open up our doors, but this is just going to be another small piece of the puzzle, an issue we care about, but one that this uh, having the product available will make it come to fruition. And so really appreciate all the community leaders that are here, members from um, Celebrate One, Women's Commission, uh, and also the Women's Fund of Central Ohio. We also have another small business owner that's building out and growing and make me happy with Leah Pugh. And so appreciate you being here and your support uh, for this initiative. Uh, to get to this point, couldn't have done it without a number of our city staff, so do want to thank Edward Johnson, Matt Erickson, Lee Cole, Cheryl Austin, and Kevin McCain and Stephanie Magus on my team uh, for putting up with me and seeing this to fruition. Uh, when that resident reached out and we've really worked hard to what can we get done as quickly as possible uh, with that commitment of ongoing looking at zone changes, it's very exciting to be here and to make this announcement. So thank you all. Thank you, Sweet Carrot, and to your team for hosting us today. That will conclude remarks and we will be available for any questions uh, that anyone else may have. So thank you all for being here. Thank <laughs> you.